I did want to offer you just if you're kind of one of the people who have still not been exposed really to this idea that um, man-made climate change is not necessarily this huge deathly impact on the environment. And in fact, our research shows that we have a, an effect minuscule at best. And a great place to start is, um, well, here's an article from Forbes in 2011. Um, and you could just, if you just research climate gate, that'll probably bring up a lot of what you need to find out. Uh, so this was climate gate 2.0. This was already after the first climate gate when a bunch of emails came out that showed um, climatologists emails to each other where they're fudging the math. And it's quite obvious. I mean, they are blatantly saying like, oh, you need to change that. That doesn't look good. That doesn't fit the agenda. Uh, and of course, they came back and said, oh, those were cherry picked. But, you know, you still said it. And it's not. Yeah, it's cherry picked to show the truth. Um, so this this is this was after that. This was after a second leak. And um, it was just insane that this stuff gets out and then it just gets forgotten, you know. So I, I like to kind of come back to some of these older articles. The original Climate Gate emails contain similar evidence of destroying information and data that the public would naturally assume would be available according to the freedom of information principles. So the emails also reveal the scientists attempt to politicize the debate and advance predetermined outcomes. Quote, the trick may be to decide on the main message and use that to guide what's included and what's left out. Of IPCC reports, writes Jonathan Overpeck, coordinating lead author for the IPCC's most recent climate assessment. Quote, I gave up on Georgia Institute of Technology climate professor Judith Curry a while ago. I don't know what she thinks she's doing, but it's not helping the cause, wrote Mann in another newly released email. Quote, I have been talking with folks in the States about finding an in investigative journalist to investigate and expose. Skeptical scientist Steve McIntyre Mann writes in another newly released email. More than revealing misconduct and improper motives, the newly released emails additionally reveal frank admissions of the scientific shortcomings of global warming assertions. Observations do not show rising temperatures throughout the tropical troposphere unless you accept one single study and approach and discount a wealth of others. That is just downright dangerous. We need to communicate the uncertainty and be honest. Phil, hopefully we can find time to discuss these further if necessary writes Peter Thorne of the UK Met Office. I also think the science is being manipulated to put a political spin on it, which for all our sakes might not be too clever in the long run, Thorne adds. Mike, the figure you sent is very deceptive. There have been a number of dishonest presentations of model results by individual authors and by the IPCC, Wiggly acknowledges. So, and it goes on and on. I mean, you, you should definitely check out this article. I'll link it. And um, yeah, if, if you thought that s these scientists were not compromised and that they weren't push pushing an agenda that they knew was fake, well, you were wrong. And here's more evidence. And there's tons of it. Like I said, just hashtag uh, or, you know, search uh, climate gate. You will find it all. Oh, and by the way, I, I, I also made note of the guy who uh, wrote this article because it, it's an amazing, just like mind-opening article if you're not aware of this information. Uh, it's by James Taylor. Uh, he is the, the president of the Spark of Freedom Foundation. So just in case you're trying to say like, oh, this guy, who's, who wrote this article? Uh, who, who cares what he says? You know, uh, well, let's look at you know, Spark of Freedom. The Spark of Freedom Foundation aims to inf influence public policy by promoting free markets, affordable energy, and common sense energy and environmental solutions. Okay, so this guy's got his head screwed on straight. And if you read about him, I mean, um, he's the president. Uh, he's been on like all these other kind of boards and things, promotes affordable, abundant energy founded on in conservative economic principles and a common ground approach. He earned a BA in government and studied economics and atmospheric science 
at Dartmouth College. It sounds like he knows what he's talking about when it comes to climate, right? I mean, do you uh, do you have a degree like that? He obtained his JD from Syracuse University College of Law. He has presented environmental analysis on CNN, CNN Headline News, CBS Evening News, MSNBC, Fox News Channel, and several national radio programs. Uh, he has personally advised presidential candidates, governors, and state legislators on, on, energy and, on energy and environmental issues. The dude knows his shit, okay? That's what I'm getting at. Do you know your shit? Do you know your shit as good as James Taylor? I doubt it. I highly, highly doubt it if you disagree. Um, and I would say if you disagree, you are probably a, a climate hoax shill. I'm going to have to come up with a good term for you guys. Maybe that'll work for now. Um, the global warming... Oh yeah, the great global warming swindle. You've got to see this documentary if you've never seen it. I'll link that. Uh, it was a uh, <laughs> definitely caused a lot of controversy. Uh, it was a UK program, I, I believe it was on uh, you know like PBS or something like that. Uh, it premiered in uh, twenty uh, two thousand seven. Uh, yeah, on the British Channel Four. Yeah, so British television producer Mar Martin Durkin argues against the virtually unchallenged consensus that global warming is man-made. So it's just a great thing, man. Like, uh, I, I downloaded this off of YouTube, I think, because um, this is important information that you don't want it getting deleted off someday once, you know, the, the communists uh, decide that this is information is no longer viable for consumption by the masses. They, this will get deleted, I'm sure. Uh, so make sure you're backing up some of the information you're finding as well. I, I, I recommend that. Uh, plus, you'll get to watch it uh, when the power go to, goes down, when they shut down your grid and you're sweating or freezing in your home during some extreme uh, climate catastrophe. Uh, you will have videos to show your family of like, this is how we got here. This is how the collapse haps happened. This is how the, uh, the globalists and the socialists took over and and uh, pushed us towards these green economics that did not work and caused power grid failures. Because make no mistake, if everything was running off of Petro, the power would be running just fine. Nobody would be uh, asked to turn down their ACs. They, you wouldn't have any uh, rolling blackouts like you're seeing all over the nation. This isn't just Texas, too. I want to point that out. A lot of people try to make fun of us right now because we're on our own grid. Trust me, once we get some of these jackasses uh, in charge out of the way having our own grid is going to be vital it's going to be one of the best decisions texas ever made uh the more we can get away from depending on the union trust me we're, we're going to be we're going to be happy about it we just got to get it all worked out and yeah i don't i don't know <laughs> who needs to who needs an ass whooping who needs to get kicked out man but yeah that this is, seems like a manageable thing that even Democrats like the, the guy uh, from the Houston Chronicle wrote about. Like, I, we, we agree 100% on the solution. It's like, yes, use both. Use them when needed. Have the, the gas ready to go. Use the solar and wind when you can, right? 